pretty soon. Okay, I'm just giving uh, Twitch a little bit of time here to pick up. So as soon as I see a viewer signing on, I will uh, get started. Hello, my name's Amber Nicole, and my company's called Uncharted Tutoring, and I live stream me making stuff. Um, that's what I do. Uh, here, I'll, you know, here's a couple of things I made with some kids yesterday. They're really cute. Um, this is a flying kick zombie demonstrating the cardiovascular system along with just a little bit of a demonstration of the skeletal system so we have the skull and the ribs like protecting the cardiovascular system because that's a little important um, i hadn't done this anatomy system in the flying kick uh, gingerbread cutout so i thought it was really important to do that for the kids and it was adorable um, here is a skeletal system of a lumbering zombie look at that it actually glows in the dark and i was looking around right before i got started here from one of my uv uh flashlights but i didn't ah here we are i thought i had one um you know so like can you see that can you see that it's like really cool and glowing in the dark yay phospholuminescence um oh there we go so when i like when i pull it away right it gets uh you can really see that it's actually glowing in the dark and then you know the white balance goes off and whatever and then we send them broken pieces too because since we're doing this remote we don't send them the wet clay because we can't send them the gingerbread cutters um so we send them broken pieces and because zombies fall apart all the time right so this is my um my my zombie that fell apart I, I might glue it together like this i don't know it's kind of funny just to have like a zombie that's falling apart but it also you know has some 
lovely glow-in-the-dark phospholuminescent moment. Um, the heart is UV reactive, but it does not glow in the dark, so that's kind of fun. I don't know, can you see that skull? Yeah, they're adorable. So it's one of the ways I use uh, to teach kids anatomy. It's a lot of fun. Just a little overview of kind of the way my brain works. I seem to be missing one of my cameras here. Let me see if I can fix it. Let's uh, refresh that device and see if I can get it to pop up. We'll pretend like we're going to change it because sometimes that works. So now you get two views of me, everything you wanted. Um, and then we'll go back to this. Maybe it should be working. Um, do to do, do. So this one's working. Is this one just not like plugged in well? I'm telling you. The more cameras, the more complication. That's what it comes down to. Um, I'll give you the overhead view for a minute. I mean, that works. It's not really great because it needs to be brought down a bit. I haven't had time to work on my scene here, um, but I have been kind of in the background. I don't know why everything, so it must be the port I'm plugging that into because when I had a different camera up there, it would flash in a similar way. Um, so I'm a little worried that that port is kaput. Kaput, it might be kaput. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. All right, I'm gonna refresh that camera. I think I think maybe it's just hurt. Sometimes cameras get hurt and we have to pay attention to their feelings. We need to give them a good restart so that they feel loved and like we're paying attention to them. Even if they aren't our primary camera. Wah! Now it is saved, it is saved. And you can see all my hands doing the things. Um, yeah, so, you know, adorableness. Here's another thing I did with the kids, teaching them about galaxies and all. Um, it's, I use uh, glow-in-the-dark beads um, with some UV reactive powders and some dyes, glitter. It's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. We teach them about um, galaxies. So the other thing, this one, I don't think I glued this one. I did not. Um, this one I did while it was colder out, so it kind of shrunk. The water shrunk a little bit. Um, everything inside it shrunk a little bit because it's gotten warmer. Now, it's not as warm as it was last week. Notice I'm like in a regular t-shirt and I'm actually in blue jeans, but I'm not gonna wear the apron because maybe we need to get used to me not always wearing an apron. But look, I'm branded. Always be branding. Um, I think I'm gonna start out on the bag today. Um, I've been doing these snaps by hand which is okay, but I'm going to do some of them on the machine because it's faster and I don't have to snake my hand into the bag anymore. And we're gonna seal that bag back up from last time. If you remember, I had to open that like right up. Um, other exciting projects going on. My summer camps are going and I finally have more than one student in each of my three camps, so that's awesome. Um, you know, if you have kids and you're in the New England, New Hampshire area, I'm gonna sneeze, so you watch. If you're in this area and you want your kids to attend like a day summer camp with me, this is where you do it. <coughs> I predicted it, I predicted it. Um, oh yeah, and we have that shirt to repair. You know what, I think I'm gonna do that one first. Remember that shirt I had, the geometric kind of wild crazy one? Because that tank top's gonna become super important um, as we move through time here in our unidirectional manner. And uh, I really want to have this to wear because I'm gonna need this, uh, this tank top. Okay, so again, we added those black lines. Yes, they're not as smooth, but the other ones are pretty rough too. So I don't think this is gonna cause a problem. This is a heat uh, sealing required uh, kind of resist to impart the black color. If I were to just dye this and wash this and wash all this out, um, it would probably just leave behind a little bit of gray, which would be unsatisfactory. So I'm going to be trying to kind of make these colors here, in here. Maybe should have blocked off there. I'm seeing that now. I didn't do that. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, yep, we're gonna do that now. Well, I think about it before I make the mistake. So we may not get to this actually today. And I may, just out of fear, since when I was doing this last, I forgot that I'm not just doing this to like fix the black lines. I'm also doing this to provide a, as, a, as a resist. Um, I may, it's a big may, just go in and add some texture into some other areas so that my really wobbly lines don't look so kind of out there. Whenever you make a mistake, just own it and like go 110% with it. And then you call it, you know, intentional and nobody can argue otherwise. So we're going to set that aside. I was hoping to dye this today, but I guess not. Um, is there somewhere else I should add a wiggly line? I feel like here should have a wiggly line. I also feel like this orange is sad. Doesn't this orange look sad compared to everywhere else? Oh my gosh, I don't see this orange done again. We're gonna outline the whole thing and we're gonna make this orange not sad. I'm excited, today was my first day of my CSA, my crop share agreement, where I just give a farmer a bunch of money up front at the start of the year when they need the money, when they're doing their seeds and stuff. And then they like give me produce every week from their harvests. I don't always know what uh, what they're gonna harvest that week, but it's pretty seasonal. And um, the food is super duper fresh, like fresher than the grocery store. And because I go to Fresh Start Farms, which is a, a place that like, is really trying to help immigrants into the United States, you know, develop their lives again. Um, because I go there, um, oh, there's even a little stain right here that I might be able to, eh, it might be a bit much. Might be a bit much to go into that one. Um, Fresh Start Farms. Uh, since they help refugees, sometimes we get some interesting produce. And today's interesting produce is amaranth greens, which I have tried to grow amaranth myself. Um, it's native to uh, North America. Y you usually think of the grain as being the thing you eat, but that's a lot of work. Grains are a lot of work to harvest and you have to grow a lot to make it worthwhile. But apparently the greens are edible too. So I was sure to get that in my CSA because I want the funky stuff. And that's not really that funky. It, it's native to this area, but I, it's not a common European thing that we put in our diets. So I'm gonna go lay this over here. Ooh, something I can update you about as I lay this down over here so that it has a chance to dry is um, I did add some paint to the green shirt that I was working on um, and it, it kind of brought out the skull a little bit more. Um, oh, and it stuck to the pocket in the back. That's okay. Uh, but not quite as much as I would have liked. So I'm probably going to take some dirt dye and just kind of fake it around the outside and that should keep it light. Um, Calvindor, hello, hello, how are you? Um, and I tailored it in, so now it'll be a woman's shirt when I wear it. And I'll probably roll up the sleeves and tailor that by hand. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's tailored in. And then the purple shirt. I am, I'm doing pretty good. I got, I got to swim for 40 minutes this morning. I didn't bite there, I'm feeling tired this week, little on the anxiety depressed side in the morning. So if I can get any exercise in, I'm doing great. Um, but the workout feels good, so I'm, I'm, I'm all right. But uh, this is how the shirt died, and it has some interesting patterns going on that I think are caused by the threads. Um, so either I wear it like this and look kind of grungy, um, or I own it. So I'm gonna own it because that's what you do. How am I gonna own this? Good question, great question. Again, when you make a mistake, just go at it times 10. Um, and everyone will assume that's what you intended. So I have these light spots around the seams. Uh, that's just general art advice, by the way. And I don't mind the color variation, but it's just not stark enough. So I'm gonna go in and add some like stripiness to it, kind of, in a hand-painted um, fashion. 
and see if I can kind of not hide it, but like make it look like it was intentional. Yes, the Bob Ross thing, right? Happy little accidents. They make your work unique. Um, and make it so that no one else could ever reproduce it. This field is looking a little wide. Ah, well, let's bring that in a little bit. How about that? That's probably better. I've been, I, 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 I'll, I'll call it the country garden. Um, I don't know what else, the, the auxiliary garden. Um, so my friends have some like six acres out uh, a little bit west from here and big dogs and a garden plot that they are not using right now. So I've been going out there and I'm doing a three sisters planting, which means corn, beans, and squash. And I'm recording it, not going live because they're out in the middle of nowhere, but I am recording it. So I keep bringing my cameras down and then taking them back out there. And that kind of gives me some challenges when I'm sitting back up to do this. Um, but all that said, um, I do hope to edit and put it together and maybe put it on YouTube, I guess, because I don't think Twitch likes pre-recordings. I'll figure that part out. First, I need to record the process and then edit it. But my fava beans, which my, were my original experiment out there, are doing well. And then I'm doing the Three Sisters planting. I even got like real fish guts from, from uh, uh, the Saigon market here. All right, so I'm going to build this up. And I'm going to emphasize these lines. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna make this a small thing. There we go. And we're only going to scrunch it here. How about that? How does that sound like for, for a, hey, it's intentional. Sure, totally intentional um, type uh, delivery. Here we go. So we fold it up. And it's, it's not perfect or anything like that, like, but fold it up, right? And I'm actually, instead of using rubber bands, because I don't think rubber bands are going to cut it here, I'm going to grab some safety pins. Um, rubber bands won't cut it here because I'm not going all the way around this thing. But I do want some kind of a pleated texture to happen. You follow? Yeah. And we'll add to it here. Do, do, do. What have you been up to, Calvin Dor? Burning villages? Or other things? Dragons, I presume, do other things. There we go. And I'm going to run this pin right through here. And I'm going to run it back in. And this is going to give us that pressure against the fabric. You see that? Pillage and plunder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, burning, pillaging, and plundering. I mean, that's what dragons do. So you can't, you know, can't be mad at a dragon for doing what a dragon does. Here we go. And we're going to do it again here. But we're adding just a smidge. And we may even, like upset a little bit of the natural pleat that wants to continue from the bottom here but not completely just a little bit so that we can get that expanded look to go with the curve notice i am not doing the back of this whip this shirt at this time i don't think that's what i want and uh i think that's gonna do it i think for the front die here. I think. Hold up. There we go. Because I don't want it to be perfectly like in line. That would be boring. You want to break it up just a smidge, just enough that you're like, oh yeah, that looks natural or like you didn't work this hard on it. Oh, are you, are you, um, are you 3D printing the belts or, oh no, you're doing the leather work on the belts, right? Start, yeah. You, you want to keep these pretty tight. Um, when you're, when you're going to, when you're dying like this, you want to keep them kind of tight. Otherwise they just kind of let the dye flow through. And I don't want that in this case because I want these pleats to really hold together. 
So these are as tight as I can, basically as tight as I can make on those uh, pins. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna own the wrinkleness, right? But just a little bit. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna be weird. Um, it's not cheating, I don't think. Oh, I could staple it, but staples aren't always anti-rust, so I won't staple it, though I did think about it. Um, instead, I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna actually sew it. Uh, let's pull a needle, hopefully out of here, but I'm not seeing, oh, there's one. Here's one. And we'll just use this leftover thread I have lying here. Grab that leftover beeswax to make it easier to thread. You know, um, I do have some. So the trouble with uh, spring clamps or clothespins is when you're trying to like get, so they, they create a negative space. I mean, you can move them around, but then your die might move. Um, when you see how I'm, I'm going to paint this, you'll see that having something obstructing the, uh, the pleats will put me at a disadvantage. Um, it's not impossible. You could probably do it, especially if you came at it from the back end. Um, that could probably work, and that might create a mildly different texture even. Um, like coming at it from the back end could probably work, but I'm, I'm more concerned with the pattern that's occurring in the front. So I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna quite do that. But uh, notice, you know, I had that little dark, a little bit of a darker spot here, and I'm gonna own that by making it darker. Um, it doesn't have to be super like together or anything. Um, I'm, I'm making it up as I go, don't forget. Uh, <laughs> if you saw my Instagram post, everything is on topic, everything. Uh, and here we go. There we are. But I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to keep it kind of to over here to kind of like be like, yeah, I meant to do a dark spot there. Totally intentional. And I'm going to run that needle through here. Now you have to watch out with some of these athletic fabrics. If you're going to dye them, they may lose some of their like high tech properties. I could go Jackson Pollock on it, but it bleeds so it doesn't keep the crisp lines. So the, I, actually this shirt, nice that I'm wearing this, is the technique I'm doing here. So it, it's a tie dye, right? Um, but it's very controlled. So I have these really great diagonals going all the way, but very particularly placed. But now I'm doing this one, but just a little differently. The string will allow me to like, die and I can dye the string and it shouldn't leave a negative space but it might and that's part of the joy of tie dyeing sometimes right all right just one little loop is all we need but you can lose some of the high-tech properties like if this were insect repellent I would not be doing this dyeing process at all because that's definitely a coating on the fabric if it were um you know sun resistant I'm not so worried about that's mostly to do with the tightness of the weave um but sweat wicking could be um yeah because the dye yeah the dyes can change the fabric properties remember dyes are often either acidic or basic in order to actually attach to what they're dying um and until you've done experiments and like tested things in labs to make sure that they maintain their sweat wicking properties or whatever um you, you can do it but you might lose some of that high tech ness to the fabric unless it's purely because of weave and that is legit like uh, some of these things some of these fabric properties are just because of the weave um but uh some of the things like insect repellent that's gonna be a chemical permethrin i think So yeah, and the dye can sometimes eat at the fi fibers and make them a little thinner. So maybe it's not as 100% UV resistant. All those things are like possibilities. I don't want to like scare you, but they, they're possibilities. I think I lost my needle. That's funny. Um, funny, huh? huh? Where'd it go? There it is. I did lose it. So put that back. Now, what else? So that is there and then the side I'm going to leave blank and then the back because I kind of have the striping already going on can you see some of these stripes I'm going to do the same thing <laughs> I am 
always doing science. You, you, you really, as you really, really get to know me, I'm, I'm kind of always doing just a little bit of science. Um, because art and science should be together. Like, uh, people, we, we've separated them somehow. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to do like a little butterfly kind of weave right here. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. And that one I am going to clip with a clothespin, I think, because I'm going to want like a, that narrow piece undone. Here we go. I'm going to use this clothespin just to be funny. Um, it's, uh, it's got a finger bone, a series of finger bones on it. It lost, it lost the tip, but it's, it's, you know, finger bones just because you need that in your life. Um, there we go. And we're going to cleat that up and then scrunch it. It's going to look a little butterfly like just a smidge. Yeah, it's a little heavier because I, I use this is this was me testing different clays to see how they'd attach to wood. Um, if I wanted to do a thing with them and um, they they attach fine. Right. No, Ad, I like Adam Savage's quote there. Um, you're right. The, the only difference between science and screwing around is writing it down. And that is 100% the case. Um, y if you watch some of my past videos, I'm like, I'm doing that, like testing different waxes on the bag and stuff. And I'm like pinning little notes, like, here's where I did this process. Here's where I did that process. Um, because if I can't replicate it, it's no good. <laughs> I didn't learn anything. And if I forget it or, or, or it doesn't pass on to someone else, like, what's the point? Um, I'm sure there are points. There, 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 there are points, but like, really, really, we need to replicate this stuff. So where did I put that needle? Oh, I'm not sure, but this one looks like a bigger eye and, uh, I'm going to take it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, leather and, and with dyes. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of opportunities where you need to write it down. I thought this bigger eye would be big enough to really help with this thread, but um, it doesn't want to end my needles right here, by the way, I just noticed. Okay. In we go. Nice. It was easier. It was easier to thread. So I'm going to clip, no, tie these wings together and they're going to kind of make a butterfly-like impression, I'm hoping, on the back. It's going to be on the subtler side. And I may, I don't know, I gotta think through it. I may just leave the back blank, blank then because we're, we're doing it up here. Do we really need to do it everywhere? Like that's that's one of the things that I think always like points to something done at home is there's like very little editing. Um, so in, you know, the fashion world is all about, oh, less is more or whatever. And, you know, it it really often is, you know, they say take off one accessory before you walk out the door or whatever. I don't do that. But in this case, I just might take off one accessory um, for this shirt. And it doesn't have to be anything solid that's going to last, so I'm just kind of looping it through and tying it in a knot. That's all I need. I wonder, I wonder if tie-dye, I hadn't thought of this. Like, did they do tie-dye, like, by actually tying threads? I have done it, like, because I didn't have rubber bands and I really wanted to dye this sheet that I used for picnics. Um, and I just tied a knot where I don't want a knot. Let me untie it, untie that with a needle. Um, I have done it, but is that, did tie-dye originate that way? I don't know. So like there's that, the Japanese technique where they tie it around a, like a river log and they dye it and that can create some of those similar patterns. Um, I don't know. The history of tie-dye would be <laughs> something to look up, right? Um, I guess I should do that. I guess I should do that. Like, when what was the first tie-dye? What culture really pushed the grooviness of tie-dye? Kite thread. Yeah, that makes sense. Because um, that's essentially what I'm doing, but I am sewing it through so that I kind of have a little bit more going on, a little more control. Um, I used yarn for my project. It turned out pretty cute, actually. 
I did a fading rainbow of tie-dye, like each circle. It's multiple circles on a single sheet and they kind of just fade into a rainbow. It's quite nice, quite nice. All right, so that's kind of, I think that's going to end up looking a little butterfly. So it's about here. We're going to do the same thing. Let's pick it up, weave it together a little bit, give it wrinkles, and then let's tie it. I've got a knot at the end, so it should pull through quite nicely. Oh, tie the fabric itself into a knot. Huh, that should be fun. I should try that one day. Can't say I've actually tied the fabric into a knot to make it do something funky. I have done like, so I used a PVC pipe and I didn't do it in the river because I didn't want to put dyes in the river, but I, I've used like the log technique and with my students, that's it's quite, quite fun. And the kids feel like they have more control too because you apply it with brushes. Um, so I've done that with silk. Actually, do I have that hanging right now? I don't have that. I often have like a silk drapery hanging behind me. Um, it must be down for now, but um, yeah, there we are. Coolness. Okay, what do we think? I think that'll make something kind of butterfly looking. Not thrilled with this side. There we go. That looks better. Do do do. Surely that'll look a little butterflyish. Um, it's making me so zigzag. Maybe not. That's the edit we should do. So I'm gonna scrunch it up along this line. That's what I'm gonna do. And we can go back to the safety pins, I think, unless I don't have any more. Entirely possible. I never seem to have enough safety pins. Sir Hellock, hello, how are you? We're uh, talking about how to lean into some of the mistakes that occurred on this shirt. Um, so, you know, lean in. If there's a mistake, just lean in. It'll get better. Don't want to make it too even with my pleating here. Unevenness is kind of what makes tie-dye amazing. It's a major part of it at least. Ooh, and then we'll... Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's, let's push this up and pull this in as we do. Yeah. Push up and pull in, yeah? Push up and pull in. This is gonna do an interesting alternating pattern, but I'm ready for it. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna do, right there. Should open the safety pin first. Here we are. Ooh, I'm good. I got my, I got a sweet bike ride, or not bike ride. Um, swim in this morning and that's that's an accomplishment when you're when you're feeling magoo and you still get something done athletic okay we need to add a little more see it's a little loose here so i'm gonna i'm gonna add a little more here let's pleat this back up remember we talked about it earlier it was a good question by kelvin door like how tight you want to want these to be and you do want them to be tight because um Otherwise the dye just kind of flows around. And we don't want that, not quite, not quite. I think this may end up looking a little bit like a spine. I'm not sure, but I'm willing to find out. The thing with colors on both camera. So the, the shirt that I'm working on, yeah, they look like totally different colors, don't they? This one's color sucks, but that's why it was cheap. It was a $25 camera. The color that you're seeing is actually more like this camera. This is the actual color. This is just what that camera decides to do. Um, but they are in fact in the same screen. Yeah, no, I think that camera might be dying. Um, based on this color. It's never been this bad. Like even last week when I was working with the shirt, I don't think the color was this bad. Um, I do have more cameras. Actually, I bought more of this cheap one, 
put it up there. Let's see. Let's turn that. I don't want to. I don't want to change cameras. I'll look at it later. Figure out if the the camera up there is doing the same thing. If it could be a heat related thing, I'm not sure. Okay. So here are the patterns I'm going to go for. And this is going to get messy. So I'm going to put down a little something something to absorb the dye. How does that sound? Um, mostly because I just don't feel like scrubbing this thing. Plastic. Out of here, get a giant plastic bag. It's not that big, but I mean, it's a, it's a big Ziploc type bag. We're just gonna put it down and use it to protect the space just a smidge, just a little bit. Um, yeah, newspaper might work too. It would keep the splashing down. True enough. Um, I was thinking I was gonna just grab this towel and do the same thing basically. Here we are. It'll keep the keep it from splashing a little bit. All right. So we're gonna dye mostly the proud parts of this fold. Do you see that? Now what color are we gonna use? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to use one of the pure colors, I think, from over here, and I'm leaning towards that claret color. I really, ah, but that's going to be so blah. We're going to go, no, you know what? I, I'm giving in. We're going to go violet. We're going to go all the way to the darkness of violet. We're going to go all the way to violet. How's that sound? Intimidating? Um, I have gloves. I pulled them out earlier. And then um, I need a brush. I'm going to need a brush. One of, my nice, one of my nice brushes over here. Get gloves on because I don't want to scrub under my nails. It hurts to do it as much as I sometimes have to. Yeah, uh, the claret was something we used as the wash um, over all this just to really alter the color. And then I added in violet in the watered down color down here at the bottom so that it would it would fade in. Um, and now this wrinkle pattern, right, that we're going to paint on the proud parts. Oh, I'm going to get a container for that. I don't feel like dumping it out of the way. Here we are. Condiment cups for the win. Here we are. I doubt I will need all of that, but I'm not adding any other colors so I can pour it back in. Here we go. And with the controlled application using the brush, I'm going to brush it in. And it's going to have some of that tide effect, right? And we don't want to throw too much on because I don't want it to go too deep into these pleats. And some of the pleats will get more, some of the pleats will get less, just depending on where the pressure is. Um, the, there we are. Three. And it's going to fade and do wonky things because that's what we want. We want kind of wonky things. Um, I am using Dynaflow by Jacquard. Um, it's, I, I originally got it for silk dyeing um, because I, I did a lot of silk dyeing a few years ago and I now own like the entire stock. And I teach kids silk painting. It's, it's a good basic chemistry lesson um, and it, uh, it's easy to use and clean up off of most surfaces. So definitely into the Dynaflow by Jacquard. Um, so I now own them in like the largest containers, <laughs> not every color, just most of them. And I'm looking for those proud moments. And this is just a little more controlled than like a tie dyeing, you know, where you're using the bottle and really squirting it in there. The brush application gives you just a little bit more control. You know what I mean? Um, which I am always a fan of. Now, do be careful. It will drip and you will probably get drops in other places on your outfit if that's not what you're looking for. So just be gentle. Be gentle. 
It's also a very intense dye, so it doesn't require a lot of liquid. And you can water it down and still get a decent color, just like I did with this for the overall dye. The uneven application is the small container that I used last week. I knew it would do it a little bit, I just did, it didn't happen quite the way I wanted it to. So, hence the additions. Um, so I'm using it on synthetic right now and I discovered it worked on synthetic because I was wearing a synthetic shirt while teaching kids once, just some neon, you know, uh, bicycling shirt and, uh, it dyed it and it stayed really color fast. So I realized it would work on, you know, spandexes and, um, that kind of thing. Um, and, and it was a really intense color. So this shirt is, uh, again, a, a spandex type, um, just like, like a bicycling shirt or a bicycling short. Um, so it, um, it's going to take the dye just fine though. Um, I've dyed cotton with it and we, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just more intense than like the tulip dyes. Um, and the colors stay on. I don't, I, I, it's meant for silk, but it, it works beautifully on a number of materials. And really, when you look at like everything I'm doing, that's like something I kind of need out of a product is to work on a variety of materials. Um, I think I even dyed wood with this stuff. Now that I'm remembering, um, I dyed some wood with this. Um, it's my arbor that I put up over my bean bed. It's kind of like a Moroccan art shape. It kind of looks like whale bones when it's up. It's large. It's like nine or ten feet tall and each um, Each rung is a different color. I dyed it that way and then um, And then I um, And then I tinted the oil sealer with oil paint which only worked so well for some of the colors um, and um, I'm thinking, what else did I do to that piece? Yeah, and then it sealed up, and it's it's lasted one season. This we'll put it back out this year, um, and see what happens. Uh, but it's still in great shape because that because we really we really sealed it up. <laughs> we really sealed it up. It has lots of coats of that oil seal that I tinted with oil paint. <laughs> um, you don't have to set this dye. Nope, just let it dry. That's the other thing. I didn't want a heat-based dye because I'm working with kids a lot of the time, you know? Um, you, you don't want to deal with that when you, when you work with kids. Um, heat and kids, it's just it can be frustrating. It's not always, and a lot of kids are good with it. Um, so you don't have to set this dye. You, I will have to set the black resist that I put on that other shirt. That does require setting because it's, it's more of a, it's definitely a water-based type product. Um, But uh, that's just the black resist. I have clear resists that don't require setting either. Because of course they're not imparting dye. I think this is either gonna look like butterfly wings or spine, I'm not sure. I'd really be happy if it was both. Um, just my own visual preferences here, kind of a Steve McQueen. Nope, does not need another agent. And yes, I did do this shirt. This is one of the first projects I actually did here on, on Twitch. Um, I did, and I used the same technique with a really controlled folding. Um, same technique I'm demonstrating here. And then I tailored it so it fit me because men's shirts are made out of better quality fabric and don't fit a woman's body. So I tailored it. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. All right, here we are. So just very lightly in control. 
well, not lightly in control, but lightly applied and very in control. Now we're going to do this little bit here, right, just to kind of hint at editing ourselves. And I've got a few stray marks around, so I'll probably add more stray marks. Again, when you make a mistake, lean into it, and no one will know. Lean into your mistakes. Now, I don't recommend that on the job force, but like in art, it works. There we go. Nice. I'm applying this one's going to be a little straighter than I wanted, but that's okay. We'll apply that carefully. And maybe we'll get a little wrinkling and it'll look butterfly or spine esque. Spine esque. I like that word. I should make it a word. Um, so I got a little splatter in one of the armpits, so I'm going to double down on that over here. A little more dye needed. Just a little bit. Depends on the job. Yeah, yeah, true that. My experience in pharmaceuticals. Don't double down on mistakes. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. I dig it. Doubling down, right? We talked about this. Doubling down. Cool. I think it's perfect. Eh, armpit needs a little more. Now it's perfect. There we are. Okay, now I'm going to gently move this. Well, first I'm gonna pour this open dye back in because I did not mix it with anything, not even water. And we're gonna throw that away. And I'm gonna find some place to put this. Do, 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 do. Keep things tied up. Um, and I'm just gonna put it like on the floor over here. Coolness. Definitely looks a little homemade, but that's okay. It's okay. It is homemade. Um, put the vial back and cleaning materials. Where did all my, there they are. Here we are. A little bit of spray this, a little bit of spray that, spray this. Yeah, it works. my own students to make sure they have their rags before they get started. If you're watching students, get your rags before you start. There we go. That's nice. Nice and clean. I do understand that some people like get a lot of immense satisfaction from cleaning things. I'm not one. But it really bothers me when things get colored that aren't supposed to get colored. Hello, Love Tour H. Welcome. Love Tour H, you're, you're not like, you're not one of my students, are you? <laughs> yeah, get your rags before, uh, before you start your messy job. That way you don't have to walk across the room to get them. There we go. Mostly cleaned up. I find that fairly acceptable. Cool. And I have a few extra rags so I can do what I tell people to do. Cool. Take off my gloves. I'm not anticipating dyeing anything else today. Unless that shirt dries, it could happen. My name is similar. Or... So my name is similar. Similar? Love Tour H. I'm not following. To your student. Oh no, uh, no, 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 not about uh, the name. It's um, it's the fact of when you came on and gave a big O um, when I was admitting to not doing things I tell my students to do. <laughs> um, no, I'm just being a you know a teacher, kind of embarrassed for not doing everything right. <laughs> It's okay, that's why we have cleaning tools, right? Ooh. Um, 
All right. You know what? I wanted to show you guys something. Do you guys want to see something? Um, so I, I don't have enough followers yet, um, but I've started working on my emotes that you guys will get. Um, I, I will get um, emotes. Uh, uh, I, I've started working on them. So uh, I thought I would show you guys some of the emotes I was working on and you guys could tell me if they were actually something you wanted. Um, how's that sound? <laughs> Um, I started one, I started, I think it was the evil emote, and I made it an eyeball. Um, and then I started thinking about all the funny faces I tend to make here on Twitch, and how much each one of them could make an emote. I don't know. You guys tell me which one you like more, okay? Let me, um... Oh, you're not into them, though? Some people are. I don't know. I just... I don't know. Uh, it, it's something that I, I, I'll be able to give you guys once I um once I get to that that place right so I'm gonna add a scene real quick or add a layer excuse me I'm still uh we're gonna we did a screen share and it's gonna be much smaller than that it's gonna be like here and it's going to be here. All right, so here's my my Photoshop screen. Okay, and here's the emote. I was thinking... Cement faces on boulders. Really? How interesting. That sounds amazing. And like they might make good emotes, just saying. Not that I know anything. So I was thinking of making this like the lost emote. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well then you just have to get your process permitted. Like the city is always looking for, um, various cities are always looking for artists to actually like apply to do their projects and then they'll support you and maybe even give you money to do, do your projects. So if you do it like with permission, then they give you money to do it. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so that could be an emote if you guys want. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's kind of strange. I don't know. Um, here's another one that I plan to take the background out of. That'll be, ooh. Um, bypassers yeah you can do that and and then like once you get popular and if you do it right on Instagram and stuff then like rich people with lots of land and boulders on their land might want you to come and do it on their land um, you know and then so there's there's one that sip and I thought this was funny it's me sipping a hot chocolate during the great conjunction no I can zoom up. Would that help? That might help. I make all kinds of funny faces. Um, and then this one could be lurk. No. I thought it was funny. And then, uh, yeah. Lost, because I'm looking very lost here. I don't know. Maybe I should draw them. Here, I'll open up the the one that I drew. What is that? Here we are. It's smaller. But you get the idea. For evil. It could work. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I went through some of my, my, my vids just looking for good frames. And then I drew, I, I started out drawing eyeballs, but then I was like, do people really want me to draw an organ for every one of these emotes or do they want a weird picture of me and I don't know weird picture of me is a lot faster um or I can 
draw one. And I'm good at drawing, so it could work. Yeah? No? <laughs> um, so I thought I'd do a different organ for every single one of the, um, the emotes, but um, I don't know. I don't know which ones I'd assign to which expressions and I was worried about like connotations with different diseases based on organs and what the word was. Um, yeah. Uh, interest in the stream will come with time. As long as I'm consistent, it'll, it'll keep going. Um, but I thought if I put this out there, like then maybe more people would subscribe and I would get to the 50 subscribers faster. Eh? <laughs> yeah, if you hardly come, then I've drawn something. It's not a big deal. Um, but I thought I'd get y'all's opinion on, you know, the various emotes I could make. And doing me is funny. I don't know. But organs are delightful in their own way. Okay. But those are what I played with. There we are. But if you have thoughts, y'all can uh, send them to me. I'd be interested. They're strange in the best ways, I think. I lean towards organs, but it's more work. <laughs> Editing the background out of my stream is a lot easier than drawing something from scratch, but I'm always drawing organs anyway, so why not? Um, doo -doo -doo. Here we are. What else? Well, I guess I can get back to the bag now. Um, the bag. Uh, I did continue with a little bit of hand sewing just to get things going. Um, you avoid if the stream is not adjustable to low quality, fast loss of data. <laughs> Wait, is there a setting I haven't set? that lets people go low quality if they want to go low quality? Um, I'm not aware, but uh, I welcome the input. Okay. I do have like, <laughs> I have fast internet here because I pay for it just for this. And um, and uh, I have really nice cameras because I'm an artist and I wasn't going to let that go. <laughs> I had to have nice cameras. Yeah, that's what I would think. I think it would depend on the, the person watching more than anything else. So I know we got, didn't we get, yeah, we got one snap on. Ooh, I got some dye on my, got some dye on my wrist. That happens. Um, there we are. Um, Yeah, I, I try to give the highest I can. It's the highest my internet really lets me do. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sew these with the machine. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, well, cause leather and skin are like the same thing, Calvin Dor. Like, of course it doesn't come off your hands. Just saying, like, what you would expect. You're made of the thing that you're intending to die. <laughs> um. 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna add more snaps. We have, I got my first one in at the top here so that this lining will kind of, you know, really connect nicely to the bag and I don't have to worry about it. And it'll come out and I can wash it because I'm messy. Um, and I'm always messy. Messy is my happy place. It's where I like to be. Um, so let's embrace that and understand who we are and make our liners removable. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I've got some more snaps here and I'm going to do this on the machine because I have the available sides all the way open. So I'm going to bring Baby Lock over. I know some of you are fans of Baby Lock or some of you are lands of Sergio, but Baby Lock is the right uh, tool for the job right now. So let's bring over Baby Lock. And it's a little tangled up back here, but I'm fixing that. There we go. Um, now, Baby Lock has some weaker string in her right now. Um, excuse me, I was doing some t-shirt finishing up, so it was the right string at the time. Um, but I'm going to put something a little tougher in. Let's see, what have we got lying around? Easily accessed, that kind of thing. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here we go. Good. I've got plenty of this color. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is Baby Lock. She's good. She's kind. And she works hard. She is meant for heavier duty sewing. I thought it was funny, I have to say, when my mother, when um, I was in college, bought me this sewing machine and not a serger or not a serger um a singer because that's what she had and i was like but i know singer and it works and she's like no honey like you destroy my singer <laughs> so you need something called a baby lock denim pro and this is meant for sewing through thicker fabrics on the regular. Now, she has received some abuse, and not all of it from me. I did once lend it, lend it out to a friend. She said she was going to make baby clothes on it. And I was like, okay, that'll be lightweight. I'm not worried about that. Turns out she made webbing for like a dog leash, and not smart. Um, she totally tore up my plate. Um, it's since been serviced and fixed. It's, I wouldn't say it's better than a singer at all. No, it's better is definitely the wrong word. It is, um, it's just something that takes a beating. Um, and I am someone who hands out beatings. <laughs> um, on sewing machines and back in the day when I was a kid on the soccer field. Uh, not anymore. I'm not allowed to run anymore. Doctor says. So we're, we're going to use these thick, the heavy duty thread here. I already have a, a bobbin made up of it, but it's the dual duty, um, this stuff here. Yeah, I did. I, I'm a goalie. <laughs> um, I was known for dishing out injuries. <laughs> uh, the goalie is the most likely position on the field to dish out an injury, whereas midfield is most likely to receive an injury. Um, I mean, I was this tall in sixth grade. I haven't grown since sixth grade. So like, I was, I was a large child that wasn't afraid of getting hurt. Yeah, middle field. Midfield is the one that gets all the injuries, just saying. Um, whereas goalies were most likely to dish them out. I had this one, see, and when the refs didn't protect the whole charging of the goalie thing, it really presented excellent opportunities to injure other people. Um, and I had, it was, it was the South and they just didn't protect people. Uh, yeah, anyways. Um, and so I had this one move where I took a girl out for like the entire season because she charged me and I stood up when she was right at my feet, which means I flipped her over my back and she landed on her head, got a concussion and hyperextended her knee. Um, you know, kind of like a wrestling move. She was charging me, I had the ball. Clearly I had the ball if I could stand up while she was standing over top of me, getting ready to run at me and kick me. Um, anyways, like 
the recreation group asked me to play on the boys league. Uh, cause I injured so many of the female players in the recreation league. But that is long gone. I am no longer allowed to run. Where did the bag go? Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, I got an injury, um, just from repetition. My feet are very, 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 very flat. Very, very, very flat. And, um... Flat feet aren't meant to run, ultimately. Um, they're just not meant to run. And nobody listened to me when I said my feet hurt. So I ended up having to have some corrective surgery where a tendon had turned a bone um, in my foot on the navicular, my posterior tibialis tendon, and it had to be resectioned, um, which meant I was in like a wheelchair for a year and stuff. So, um, the wheelchair was only like, what, six months, but I couldn't walk for a year. So, you know, more of a repetition injury. All right. Now we put the thicker piece here and that's what we're going to do again. What's long? All right, now we're gonna set the length of our stitch to zero here, and this is gonna let us sew back and forth in this hole. I'm gonna set it to a medium zigzag. I don't think it needs to be a wide zigzag. And I'm gonna put that snap and that right down here. And I'm going to sew this in. I do the first couple of stitches right here by hand just to make sure my placement's good and I'm not going to damage my needle on my snap and then you just have to there you go yeah I did yep I didn't walk for like a year um I had a peg leg <laughs> like a pirate um so sucked I probably needed to be one of those kids that ran around with like funky looking um braces on their legs growing up but Whatever. It didn't happen. So it didn't happen. Um, and like, it wasn't the right surgery. It, it's failed successfully is what the doc said. So we, we got the bone out that wasn't supposed to be there. Um, but it didn't fix my flat footed problem. And I had to do PT for a year. Um, and then my insurance, like at the six month mark was like, you've been doing this for six months, you're done. And I'm like, I'm still walking with the cane. Like, I don't think we're done with physical therapy, folks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I'm a young woman who just completed a triathlon. Like, <laughs> I don't think walking with a cane is a reasonable place to be. <laughs> but they thought it was, so I had to pay for, you know, six months of PT out of pocket. Um, but I got back to... Not quite before, like I'll never be able to run again. Um, that's just not on the table. I'm not supposed to um, jump either. So like jumping into a pool or just jumping on the dance floor, which was hard this weekend at the wedding I went to. Um, and I can't, I tried really hard in all my PT to be able to do a single leg like lift on my toes and I can get to five. That's as many as I could do. And remember, I did ballet for many years. So, um, whatever. It's just what it is. Um, I never liked running. I only did it because, like, skinny people run. So I was like, I want to be a skinny person, so I'm going to run. And, um, <laughs> logic for you. Logic. And, um, so I took up running and decided I'd do a triathlon because I love swimming and I love biking. I was like, well, you know, skinny people run, so I might as well. But it turns out there's a reason I hate running. It's really painful. And no one caught it while I was training and doing all this stuff, which is like the most disappointing part. Because I kept going in being like, my right knee really hurts. And it's the right knee problem was probably because of all the issues. Um, there we go. Set it in there and then move back and forth a little bit. Oop, it's moving too much. There we go. Get a couple of stitches in there. And it's a lot faster. <laughs> 
Yeah, actually right now I'm on some custom Birkenstocks. Um, they're the first shoes I was able to wear that without my orthotic, my $400 orthotics that have to go in my shoes all the time. Um, and I took my uh, Birkenstocks, they just needed a little bit of work, and I, I took them to my cobbler and was like, look, I need you to put a five degree wedge inside these so that no one can, you know, so they look like a normal Birkenstock, but there's a five degree wedge um, to give me more of an arch support in here. And that's what he did. And it's, it's quite nice of him. But yeah, I went from someone who, who stood all day at the computer um, and like could not sit still for a conference, literally. Um, I could not sit still for a conference. Um, and training two a days for triathlons to being unable to walk. It was super stressful, as you can imagine. And now I'm rebuilding to that. I've, I've gotten one two workout um, day in this summer. That's the first one I've had since my surgery. So that was super exciting. I biked to the gym and then swam and then biked home. It was quite nice. And I look forward to doing that a lot more this summer, a lot more. Um, uh, but it was, it was hard. Like I had a wheelchair in here and I would just roll around and do everything. And like, I, I don't know how people, like we don't see as many people that are temporarily disabled as actually exist in the world because we tend to pull ourselves up, um, and ignore like being able to live in the world. Like I couldn't go into stores like because the doors are so heavy I couldn't open them even in an automatic wheelchair because I had one of those my husband happens to work for a medical device company that makes them so that had one lying around that I could use so I could get into town and like do errands because I couldn't drive um, it was a thing I remember my brother came to visit he was just looking for just get away from home um, and he pushed me around the Boston Commons while I was in my wheelchair because I, I literally hadn't gone anywhere. Um, and uh, he came to visit and he likes Boston. Um, and we were, you know, I just had a medical procedure and uh, he's a broke young guy. So like, So he just pushed me around Boston Commons for something fun to do. Oh, learning, yeah, learning, no, I've been swimming since I was a wee babe. My mother was someone who swam a lot growing up, um, so I competed at, when I was eight years old was my first race. So swimming has always been a strong suit. I actually even had a coach that was like, I don't, I don't think she really knew, um, but she was pretty convinced um, she could train me for the Olympics when I came back stateside. Um, and I was like, no, I, where I'm coming from, I don't think, I don't think I'm that fast. Like I'm a, I'm a second place swimmer. Like I may be fast here, but that's just cause I'm coming from a, you know, an ocean side town. <laughs> um, I, I, and I didn't want to give up Saturday morning sleepovers is what I really didn't want to give up with my friends. So I did not choose to go that route. But I was a pretty fast swimmer. Still am today, just not like training. I'm just swimming, just swimming for exercise now. Um, swimming, yeah, way better for the knees. Biking, way better for the knees. I have other nerve damage, um, so I don't ride a regular bicycle, I ride a recumbent, which means my feet are up in the air in front of me and I'm leaned back kind of like I'm on a reclined couch. It's quite nice. Certainly less, less of a sore butt. But I really enjoy physical activity. I also really enjoy eating. Um, <laughs> I think the two go together. They have to. Uh, oh, see, and that's why I run it slowly at first and it didn't work. Sometimes I wonder if sewing should be uh, required to wear eye protection because I've seen needles fly off. What's it doing now? I do have some right there. I could. It's stuck. You heard that, right? It was loud. 
We'll see. Something's stuck. We'll figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna have to get down from underneath, so I'm gonna pull this off, open up the bobbin case, and see what's going on. I don't think I put the needle through the snap. No, I think something else happened on the other side of the fabric. Although I could have. I don't think that's what's happened. I don't think so. This happens to me every time I sew, at least once, where the needle is like, I'm not coming out. You can't make me. You can't make me. We can usually get it out, though. This one's particularly difficult, though. I think I'm going to have to trim it and see what's wrong. I'm going to pull the bobbin. Cool. And since it's the really tough string, I might be able to pull everything out. Nope, the string broke. Cool. I, there are no threads hanging out down below. What happened? What did you do, baby luck? Am I not giving you enough attention? Oh, there it goes. It did not go through the snap. I don't know what it did. There's not even a dent on the snap. Just decided to be funky. Not even a dent on the snap, okay, guys? The, the bobbin casing was stuck, um, so I had to pull it out. I don't know what it was stuck on, though, because everything looks to be in order. So that was exciting. Sometimes I think sewing should require eye protection. It's moments like that. It didn't even break the needle. I don't know what happened. Everything's moving. We'll try that again. Terrifying, but we will. Why did you do that, Snap? Or machine? Or why ever this happened? We're gonna stream rip that. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the needle. I'm not seeing it bent. I'm gonna seam rip this off, though. There we go. Because that doesn't need to be a thing. The needle's still looking straight. It may just be time for servicing. It's been about a year. My mother always said to get your machine serviced every year. I have never done that. <laughs> not once. Um, I mean, I've gotten it serviced, just not like yearly. I don't think, until this year, I probably hadn't sewn enough to even warrant that. But with masks, I, I did. Here we go. Let's pull that thread through. Oh, thread the needle first. This won't work without threading the needle. Do my little trick for pulling it out. And this is what, how my mama taught me to do it. You pull and then swoop. And you pull it through and everything goes. And we're gonna try this again. Are you ready for this? I mean, the snap does have like three separate strings in it already. So. Okay, so it's acting weird. I got one stroke in there. Let's try this again. It was acting stiff. Okay, um, scrap fabric, hold on. Scrap fabric. And it works perfectly. <laughs> yeah, every six months sounds like a lot. Um, Goodness gracious, does she sew professionally? Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> she must she must sew professionally. Um, I 
every six months gosh this this year I, I, sh I should take these in once I get this bag done I am gonna get, take them in to get serviced both of them the surgery's never been serviced and I, I I'm noticing some timing off on the chain chain stitch um, that I can't explain right you'd mention that yeah so like It's weird. It is getting, there is a, a, a sticking spot, if you will. I might have to take them in early. I might have to take them in early. Um, I mean, it's not early to take them in. It's just earlier than I wanted for this channel, very specifically. <laughs> um, but you know what? If they need to go, they need to go. And that's all there is to it. I was thinking of taking surgeon first. Um... I don't have anything I really have to do with him for a bit, but, and then keeping baby lock. And then when I got surge back, taking in baby lock, you're right. It may be bent at the base. You're right. That may be the case. That may be the case. Ha ha. It's a pun. If you, anyways. Did anyone else get it? No. Nope. It's okay. It's all right. I I know. I know. Not everyone. Everyone will get that. All right. So we have one half of a snap on. <laughs> Some point five run the judges. <laughs> um. You know what? I'll take it. That's a C. That's a C. I, uh, the best pun I've ever made. Oh my God. So there's this game. I don't know if you've ever played it. It's called Punderdome. And it's a game where you make puns. Go figure. And, <laughs> uh, you, you get a random subjects drawn from a, a deck that you have to combine into some kind of a pun. And um, I got schoolwork and shower. And I combined them into, you know, why didn't the teacher give you all the credit for your homework was my, was my prompt. Because I didn't shower my work. I didn't shower my work. It worked in text better. Um, but it was a good one. Let's see here. Pull the needles. I did just buy a bunch. Did I put them away yet is the question. It's an overlock. Let's stretch. Did just buy. That's Jersey. That's not what we want. We'll take the denim. The denim shall, shall work. Whoop, there goes a bobbin. Thanks. See, see, it's a good one. Yeah, best pun I've ever made. Um, if some of you really enjoyed. Uh, my friends love this when I show them my bobbin holder. Um, it's a circle that, like, it's a, like a donut that holds tight on the bobbins so that they don't roll. Every other bobbin holder I've ever found. Um, oh. oh, I don't know what you're talking about. We're, uh, we make things on this channel more than we destroy things. Um, we definitely make things in this channel. And we're gonna change out this needle. Sam Ferrati. Hobo hunting? I mean, really, they're just disadvantaged people that, you know, got a really crappy deal in life. Um, you, a lot of addiction problems around here. We even have the winter to contend with and, oh man, you know, with COVID they were, I don't know if you guys followed homeless populations at all in COVID, but they live in these communal spaces, especially in the winter up here. And how do you protect a group of people from, from COVID who have to live communally, um, 
without much protection. Like they're literally stacked in like sardines, like in bunk beds and stuff. So a lot of homeless people were really scared of the shelter, rightfully so. Um, and um, yeah, then uh, so they set up their own camps. It's like it's wiggling too much. I wonder why. I think that needs tightening. It needs servicing. Um, yeah, I need to tighten that. Uh, let's tighten that. So, like, they were scared and they didn't want to live in the homeless shelters, rightfully so. I mean, really, there was no protectant, protection able for them at all. So they would, um, so they, they let the camps go for much longer than they would normally let, you know, homeless encampments go. And, um, then, then some fires broke out, and so they, they broke down the homeless camps. And um, It's a really complex problem to answer in terms of homelessness. And um, we just don't have a great answer, I don't think. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to solve it, that's for sure. Let's try this again. I'm not finding the screwdriver I need in order to tighten that. Maybe, it may even be my whole problem. Might it be that that, that piece is wiggling so much? So let's work harder to find that screwdriver. This one ought to work. I think I can get this one down small enough. Here we go, this one. No, not this one. This is the wrong one. There's another one somewhere around here with a white handle like this one. But I think this one will work. Hot blueberry drink. That sounds delicious. I've been drinking uh, carbonated coconut water, basically. It's... So is it... So is it... Uh, Cold where you live, Zim Ferrati. Yeah, that needs that needs tightening, and I can't get behind it. Yeah. What kind of drink is it? Is it a tea? repair my husband did to this machine. Now that I'm looking at it, he did repair it. Oh, that's not right. All right, this is taking more concentration than I would like. I have to take the pressure foot off. We're gonna take the whole thing. There we go. Let's see if we can get to it now. Whew. That does sound warm. Do I teach every day? Um, right now, no. Blue, really, it's just like warm blueberry juice, and it's good, huh? Um, I don't quite teach every day. I will next school year, and I I did before COVID. There we go. That looks right. No, that can't be right. Is it right? No. I've never taken this piece off. I'm scared to go that far. Ooh, I got it. Okay, that'll stabilize it. 
but that piece clearly needs tightening. She may go in for service sooner than I thought. Um, oh. There is a needle there, in case you were wondering. Yes, let's watch my crazy art science teacher screw things on and off. There we go. That's a little better. Um, next year, so I have my company Unchartered is really awesome, right? We conduct these after school educational things um, where we always combine art and science. And we've been doing it about four years and it's awesome. It's like the best job ever, but we're not in the regular school program. We are after school program. So, you know, we might run 14 programs a week, but that just means we're doing, you know, two lessons a day. Um, and we got to the point where we were regularly running like 18, almost 20 lessons a week. Um, and the vast majority of them were in that after school hour time. Um, so it was like, it was full-time work for me um, to like organize everything and to teach. Uh, but it was not full-time work for my workers, so that always put them at a disadvantage. Um, so I was working to getting it to the point where we'd have more daytime programs and, and that kind of stuff when COVID hit. And we were doing really, really well right before COVID. Like, really well. Like, I was just teaching one program a week. Everyone else was teaching all the programs. I had eight people working for me to, like, make all this happen. Um, we were developing training programs. I was in talks with some groups to go national, like people wanted my programs go national. It was awesome. Um, groups that just wanted to see my programs in, in every school in North America. And um, it was it was gonna be awesome. And then COVID hit. <laughs> so I didn't have work for people. We made the transition over the summer into online learning, but people just didn't want to sign their kids up for online learning um, after they'd been in school all day doing online learning. Now my programs are wildly different than what they're getting in the, the regular school programs, but... Um... Hi Anna, so glad you're here. Love you too. But yeah, so it was, um, it's been a challenging year. Uh, yeah, it's been a challenging year, but so the next year I'm, that brings me back to the teaching every day thing. Um, so when I'm teaching in class, it doesn't really cost me anything to run it, but if I'm having one of my teachers teach it, it costs me more to run it. Right. Um, so my people haven't had hours. Um, but I did get the two series of the payroll protection program loan. And um, they forgave the first one. And so I'm in the process of having the second one forgiven. And so I paid my, my first one because it was over the summer. Um, I just paid my people to make masks. We made masks. I trained some of my teaching assistants to work with laser cutters at an engineering firm and they would cut all the supplies out and my teachers would sew masks. Um, so, you know, we tried to take those. It's okay. It's Don't worry about the memories. It's, it's something to have learned from and hopefully other business owners can learn from me too. Um, but it's, um, it, it was just, it was hard. Um, like when you own a business and it's like what you're doing full time, your, your business really does become your identity. Um, <laughs> and obviously my business is very entwined in my identity. It's who I am. Um, <laughs> and, um, so and I was in talks to be in new schools and all that right before COVID. Oh, there's that. This is the screwdriver I was looking for. Um, I think we're good now. I'm going to test. So, so, you know, it was, it was a challenge. Um, the company is still around. My people of course had to take actual like more paying jobs because 
of COVID, right? Because I didn't have hours for them. I'd give them PPP loan stuff um, for as long as I could, like, and they were just literally either not doing work for me or making masks, like, from home. I was like, no, we're not getting together. You guys don't need to come in here and make masks. You got a sewing machine? You make masks at home. I'll pay you. Um, and uh, it, it was cool. It, you know, we, we learned how to adapt. And then I spent the summer uh, rewriting all my lessons to make them uh, online. So I spent the entire, yeah, <laughs> I spent the entire summer rewriting all of my programs or the ones that I thought would translate into remote learning. Um, and we launched our remote learning option and we literally, we were shipping to students, but never, never enough. Like we were shipping to students in California, students in Colorado, students in Alabama, Connecticut. Um, it, it was like, okay, I'm feeling better about this now, you guys. Um, and that, that, that went reasonably well, but it just not well enough. Um, there just wasn't wasn't enough work. Um, so whenever we got PPP loans, I offered discounted classes to people, like passing that through and just keeping my my people working. <laughs> I am full belly. I am quite full. Um, and trying to drink my water, right? Yeah, don't forget to hydrate. Um, so it's been a challenge. So the next year, but where, where this is all going to. Um, so when I started Unchartered, I worked as an adjunct at uh, uh, the college, the art college here. I taught typography and graphic design, um, as well as business in the evenings. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, uh, yeah, well, you know, you're, you're at the end of your day, right, Sir Hallock? So, you know. Um, there we are. So like, where was I going? So I, I adjuncted um, teaching, you know, college courses for the the art school around here, and um, and that went really well. But the school got bought by another school up here, so New Hampshire Institute of Art got bought by New England College, and they moved all their graphic design courses to Henniker. I'm not driving 45 minutes to teach college courses. Um, one, they don't pay you enough for that. Like it was just literally down the street for me, so I would walk there, and that was pleasant. I'm not driving 45 minutes to pay, you know, to get paid basically nothing. Um, so I've taken a part-time job as the art teacher for a local school around here. Um, so I'm going to do that while I rebuild Unchartered um, into what it was before. I think it will go just as quickly as it did the time before that. I, I turned a profit in our first year of existence, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, it just just kind of sucks um and then hopefully we'll build it back up to that presence where you know we are considering things like international um contracts and that kind of thing I'd, I'd really like to get there again I know TMI but um and so one of the ways I'm hoping to do that is by raising awareness by streaming on twitch and and um and that kind of stuff Oh yeah, I love kids. Kids are great. Um, I just aren't, I'm not reaching as many kids as I did before. Um, the, the thing that really gets me is, um, like, so the vast majority of my programs are run for disadvantaged kids. So um, there's something here in the US we have that's called Title I. Um, and so in schools where, you know, a certain number of the kids are on lunch assistance, they pay for after-school activities like homework help and that kind of stuff. And that's what my, my, my program fell into. And it was a really, really great fit. Um, so I was helping kids that just didn't have anything. Like they just don't have anything a lot of times. Like they don't even have crayons at home or, or whatever. And so, you know, you, you feel for them so much. So like I could give them art and science and maybe if they have a love for science, then we'll make better decisions for their health and the future of the country in in the future right i don't know um that's my theory on it okay we can do this right this is gonna work i may hand sew this this the other part of the snap really makes this a little more challenging um there we are oh i'm traveling here we are um so like 
I don't know. It's, it just drives me nuts that I can't help those kids anymore. Um, and like the number of kids that are being left behind by this digital online learning, um, Well, the kids do need interaction from their parents, but like so many of the, the kids that like I work with, their parents are working two jobs. You know what I mean? They're, they're par just to make ends meet. Um, and they, they don't even, they can't, they can't. They just can't. The, the parents are trying their hardest. Um, this is not going as well as I would have liked. The poor, poor kids. The poor parents. The poor everything. It's just a, it's a tough situation when you, when you know, to remove the school influence, like where they got their lunches every day, and um, any outside interaction from their parents if abuse is a thing. Um, just sucks. They do need parents, but unfortunately, we don't have a system set up where kids. Where, where parents are even given the opportunity to, to be there for their kids. It just, if, unless you, you know, came from generational wealth. Um, uh, so most, uh, so the mass, vast majority of my, my students are um, called underprivileged. So they, they often go hungry at home when school does not feed them. Um, their parents are working two jobs just to make ends meet. Um, they come from homes or, you know, there are a lot of refugees. Um, it's just the nature of, of the work with the Title I schools, right? It's all these kids that really don't have anything. Um, now, I do work in some of the private schools as well, and so those are middle and upper middle class um, families. Uh, but the, you know, I'm not too worried about them because they're going to get extracurriculars because their parents are involved, because their parents can be involved, because their parents have time to be involved. Um, whereas, um, you know, the kids in the Title I schools, the parents are trying so hard, but they, they can't. Or maybe the parents don't even speak English because they're refugees. I mean, that, that's a common occurrence. So who's supposed to help them the, with their homework when... And they don't even speak English. Um, it's a tough situation. So this online learning was not ideal. We ran our classes. Um, you know, so the local families would pick up their uh, supplies from here at the studio. Um, we would ship supplies, but that got really expensive. So a lot of people didn't. Um, there. It just. It was hard. And, you know, when, when a lot of the kids don't even have computers at home. Um, like, how, how, do you, how do you help those kids? Um, you know, when they're coming from, like, horrible situations where, like, um, they've been abused or, um, you know, they're, they're running for their lives, literally. Um, you know, people don't do things like run for the border on foot unless something's going really wrong in their life. So, you know, there's a lot of struggle there. Um, and trying to get kids the resources they need in order to be successful um, is really difficult. And online learning made it harder. So, yeah, that's, you know, my heart goes with, um, yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's tough to go, you know, when you're, when you're escaping something like gang violence, you know, it's not like you plan for two years to leave and go to some place. You're like, I got to go now. My life is in danger. You don't have time to learn English. And then if you're able to settle into a community and able to conduct your life um, in a way that's, you know, doesn't require you to speak English, you never learn it. Um, and, you know, it's not like we have an official language, so, you know, live life however you want. Um, just like in Canada, they have French and English, you know. 
but we don't have an official language of any sort, so there's nothing that says that they have to. Instead, we translate ourselves into their needs, and that seems to work. But uh, it does put kids at a little bit of a disadvantage, but the kids get through it, and then the kids end up doing a lot of the translating work. But they're, they're giving their kids something that they feel like they needed to, right, by running away um, from, from whatever violence they, they were escaping. Or maybe just better jobs, right? You can't knock anyone for wanting a better job. Goodness gracious. We all want better jobs. But there are some situations, certainly, where... You know, you just want a job where you won't be sexually harassed or potentially literally lose your head, you know? And those poor kids that, you know, we're going to tighten the stitch up a bit. There we go. Why are you getting caught? I did not even. I didn't even. Got caught and I hadn't even pressed on the presser foot. I have Billy Joel stuck in my head. I talked to a musician this weekend, um, someone who's going to let me use her original music on my, my channel here. So that should be exciting. She's going to work on recording her original music so that I can uh, use it on Twitch. Uh, I'm super excited about that. Oh, the case must be caught. Nope, I don't see it. It's not caught. Uh, she mostly, um, she's a vocalist and guitarist for the most part, and she usually does covers of like... Um, famous songs because that's what most people seem to want from her commercially um, so but she does have beautiful original work that I'm hoping she'll let me use um, for this channel um, she's she's already very interested in it um, it's just a question of does she have time to sit down and record it she she's an important person who works in the mental health field um, she actually you guys will love this she she uses D&D &D and therapy sessions um, so she's a pretty cool, pretty cool person. Um, you know, as, as someone who uses Dungeons and Dragons in, in therapy sessions. Yeah, no, she, she's a guitarist and a, and a singer, so, um, and she's quite good. I've, I've hired her before for, uh, like, professional, like, gallery openings and that kind of stuff. Um, we, I've worked with her in that capacity. And uh, she was at the wedding I was at this weekend. She was not performing at that one. They did a DJ. Um, and plus, like, she's a good friend of theirs. So, like, why would you? You don't want to have to work the wedding where you just want to hang out and be with the peoples. Um, but she's a very, very good artist. So, I like her, her music quite a bit. This did not work. Okay, what did I do wrong? Probably everything. In we go. Yep, I did everything wrong. <laughs> Some people are just vocalists. Um, they can play instruments, but like their talent is their voice. Her voice is incredible. It really is. Um, and she usually does something for Pride Week around here um, as that comes up. And um, so she's she's in high demand. So I'm I'm really hoping I get to use her music because that would be awesome. <laughs> Um, she's quite talented. Ah, oh, where did, oh, I completely ran out of string as well, but that's okay, because I planned on that. Where did I put the new string? Here we are. Do, 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 do. But yeah, like, I'm all kinds of worried about copyright strikes against me, so I've, like, I don't even, like, hum, like, the song that's stuck in my head. I don't play any instruments. Well, I, I can read music. Um, I learned to play the piano as a kid. I did not enjoy it. Um, 
and uh, I'm a little flat. I'm a little flat. Um, I, I probably have some kind of hearing damage from when I was a kid, so I am a little flat. I like singing. I'll sing like in groups of friends, whatever, maybe even um, karaoke in the right situation, but you don't really want me to sing. Um, I do dance. I danced for many years ballet, um, and uh, now I swing dance with my husband quite often. Um, well, not as often as we'd like. Once the house is done, we'll have more free time. But um, yeah, I'm a pretty good dancer, but I, I cannot, I cannot, uh, you, you don't want me to sing for you. That's all, <laughs> you don't want that. But uh, Jasmine, on the other hand, Jasmine can sing. So I am looking forward to the possibility of having her on the channel for our music. I also, I've also asked her, so I did this thing with the kids, um, Disco Party Planet. We were making planets, um, and we kind of invented this song and we called it Party Disco Planet. And um, I want her to turn it into something. <laughs> uh, so we're, I'm hoping she and I will get to collaborate on that as well. Because she's a smart cookie. Come on. You can do it. We don't want you to actually go through the metal. We just want you to get to the other side. There we are. Is that working for you? Nope, that's metal now. Why are you being a challenge. There we are. It's still faster than doing it by hand, I think. <laughs> oh, you love to dance but never took classes. Just take the classes. They'll teach you everything you need to know. Really. Um, I mean, I, I did ballet, of course, growing up. Um, but the swing dancing is a lot of fun. My husband didn't dance growing up until I started teaching him swing dancing, and then we took some lessons together, and it ended up being a lot of fun. Um, no surprise at all. But yeah, we, we enjoy dancing. There we are, tying these off so that things go well. Oh, and then today, so today was nice. Um, oh, we never took classes. Today was really nice for my swimming because my, my waterproof bone conductor, uh, um, someone just had an accident. Um, I think I know the intersection. I'm listening. Hold on. If I don't come back, I'm doing CPR.
I'm back. I'm back. They're fine. Everyone was up and walking around. <sighs> yeah. Um, so it's, we're not on the, the corner. It was a crash, yes. We're not on the corner, but we're close enough. Um, I'm just, <sighs> we're one, one house down from the corner. Um, it happens pretty regularly because it's, it's a one way and people don't seem to understand how one ways work. And people tend to take it a little fast right there. You know, like people do. And, um, this one, the drivers got out, they were both walking around, so I'm not worried. But, uh, I like to, I'm home, you know, I'm here, I'm in my studio all day. And, you know, maybe other people aren't, so I think it's important that I go check. And plus, I'm, I'm first aid CPR certified. So, <laughs> um, so anytime I hear an accident out there, I, I do run out and check. Um, it's usually, usually fine. Um, when they get going really fast, um, the, the, the other house on the corner kind of across, um, the way their house is set up, at least twice a year, a car ends up going over the corner curb and they have this, it's the way the rocks are just set up and it kind of ramps them and they like fly over their raspberry bushes and land in their front yard. It happens twice a year. Um, <laughs> the joys of, you know, living in a city. We're a small city, but a city. <sighs> Arts and crash. Arts and crash. Yeah, you know. That's a good one. That's a good one. I gotta hand that one to you. That's a good one. But uh, it looked like everyone was fine. Everyone was up and walking around, so I'm not gonna butt my nose into that. They don't need me, especially during a pandemic. Notice I hadn't even thought about, like, am I going to check their vaccination status before I give them CPR? I don't know, man. Um, I'm just more worried that someone, especially a kid, could be hurt. And it is around the time when school buses are dropping people off, too. So um, it's all fine, though. Everyone's fine. At least they didn't fly into the neighbor's yard. All right. Have we, have we seriously only gotten one in, uh, well, we have seven eighths of a snap on. I have to add one more stitching on and then we'll have two. I don't know, is this really faster on the machine, you guys? Especially with our timing being off. I'm thinking no, actually my answer is leaning towards no. I think it's gonna be faster to do this by hand. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna move the machine and I'm gonna keep going by hand. The timing issues, she, she, I, I need to take baby lock to be serviced. I also need to take Sergio, but we knew that. So yeah, bummer. All right, let's, where's my pin cushion in the excitement? There we are. And I'm just gonna hand sew. I hope you guys don't find it boring to have me at this point, yes, um, hand sewing is in fact going to be faster because of the timing issues. Um, and it actually may be that, you know, one of the pieces is better um, machine sewn and the other one is better hand sewn because of the geometry of the snap itself. But to go back and forth just sounds a little bit exhausting. So I'm just gonna take it and go with it. Oh, I'm gonna need the thread. Oh, sorry, you don't get to keep that. It'll be fine. I'm not too worried. At this point, yes. By hand is probably faster. And that's okay. That is way, way okay. Um, I just thought I'd try the machine. And at the time, if we weren't having the timing issues, I really think it wouldn't be a thing. Like, it would be obvious that the machine is, is better. 
Maybe that's why people don't use snaps. I should mention that to Dave because Dave is like, my husband uh, is, is all, he's like, snaps are wonderful. Why don't we use them more? And I always thought it was just because they came undone too easily. Um, but I'm thinking it may be that it's so much more difficult to sew on. There must be like a snap sewing machine that they use in commercial production. It must be something like that, right? What do I know? Ah, specialized machines do, do well when you're in mass production like that. So we'll just do this. It'll be fine. I'm not worried. But yeah, what was I? Oh. Oh. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe that's what I should be doing with denim anyways. I don't know, that sounds so, so much more violent um, than I probably need to do with, um, with, with snaps for, for fabric. That's not the one. I'm doing this one. Here we are. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I thought about using bigger snaps just to make my life easier, but I, I stuck with this like 3 8 not 3 8 it's probably like a 5 8 size. Um, I don't know why, I don't have a good reason why, but I stuck with it. Um, I have a couple really big ones that I've used for hats and stuff, um, but like, I guess those would have the advantage of they'd fit under the presser foot, which is the problem with this particular piece. Hmm. I mean, and I am making this really secure. Like, I am going at this so that this is, like, the most secure it can be. Like, I'm using four different strings for each of the corners of the snap. Like, that's really freaking secure. There we are. Can you guys hear my neighbors? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on, but he said the only thing I'm worried about is if we get caught. <clears throat> they have two small children. I'm sure it's something legal. They're good kind people. Their youngest's favorite color is purple, so I grew some purple flowers right on the corner for her. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like that size. And that's, that's maybe what I should have gone for. And as it is, I'm questioning my snap, like, spacing as well. Because <laughs> uh, this is going to be a, a challenge. They're talking about a hose. Whoppers. Whoppers. <laughs> That's a good idea. There we are. Okay. One more snap done. What do you guys think? It's the Twitch channel of sewing snaps. I think I will uh, continue to work on these like in front of the TV um, instead of boring y'all with sewing a million snaps on. Um, I mean, I'm gonna keep working on it now too, but like, I don't think I feel the need that I must sew every snap like live on Twitch. Just, you know, for your, uh, you know, consideration. <laughs> if you're worried about this just being me watching me uh, sewing snaps on, I don't think it's going to be that forever. Uh, 
Oh. Here we go. Ooh. My butt just vibrated. Cool. So, my friend has a recycling company. And what does that mean? It means he gets deliveries of really cool stuff on a regular basis. He's on the watch for a few things for me and uh, he's still finding all the pieces, but he thinks he has a full-sized, real-life um, skeleton for me. Super excited about that. Because um, <laughs> I don't have a life-size skeleton, but I'm excited about it. So we need to think of a name for this skeleton coming in. Um, and, uh, and one of the things I really need because of this Oh, did I get there? So I've taken a part <laughs> I promise I'm on topic. I've taken a part-time job. I did get there. Um, teaching art um, at a local school. Um, it'll be fun. I've, I've worked with the community before. I'm going to have a good time. And I've, I promise to do a year. Um, it's going to be good, but it means I have this classroom I have to get together with a really, really small budget. Um, and so one of the things I really needed was a bunch of three door lateral filing cabinets because um, I'm not into a shelf storage system for open art supplies, especially in, ki in rooms where kids are actively working. I think it just presents too much of a distraction for the kids. Um, there we are, pull this through. And um, so, yeah, so I'm gonna get more, um, so I'm gonna get these lateral filing cabinets, but he, I, I asked him to be on the lookout for them for the, the summer and that I needed them by August, you know, mid-August. And he texted me like yesterday, like a week, literally two weeks, maybe at the most, after I visited to check out his facility with like six of them. <laughs> and it's like exactly what I need. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but I'm going to get these things that I just like really, really need. <laughs> um, and he just texted me to let me know he's going to measure how big they are. Because that, that affects how many I can fit in the room. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn a lot by being a regular art teacher. Um, you know, from classroom management type stuff and dealing with kids that don't want to be there in my class, which I don't have right now because you, you have to sign up for my classes, um, to like, I don't know, there's going to be a lot. There's just going to be a lot that I'm going to learn. I'm, I'm fairly confident. Um, you know, and, and one, and about school administration too, because like, that can't be easy. And so I'm gonna, I don't know, um, why that, oh yeah, because my butt vibrated. Um, that's why that came up. But um, yeah, so he's, he's also on the lookout for me for like an art deco lamp style that I'm looking for, because I want to turn it into like a painted lady. Yeah, I know, weird. But I really want to do it. Um, you know, projects for, for, for you guys to watch me make. Um, and like, I'm going to do, I think some projects for the kids where they like get to make, um, where we get, you know, metal being thrown out, old silverware and stuff, and we can make sculptures out of it. Teach the kids to solder, which is like a good life skill. And, um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to be like any other art teacher, which is what I'm sure every other art teacher says. But really, they're giving me total creative freedom to teach and do how I want. So, yeah, I go to state auctions and, and stuff on the regular. Um, they're, uh, they're good places to, to pick up stuff. Actually, I just picked up um, hardwood flooring. And I, the last thing I really, so while, <laughs> you're going to think this is funny, y'all. Um, right before COVID hit, I was watching the state auction site and a trolley popped up and I seriously considered buying it for Unchartered so that we could travel to the schools and have like a traveling classroom. You know what I mean? 
And like, so kind of like Magic School Bus, but I have a trolley. So, you know, I'm not really Miss Frizzle, but you know, just a little bit. Anyways, um, Billy wanted to do somersaults. And yeah, so like I thought a trolley would be really fun to have. <laughs> but uh, I didn't buy it, fortunately, because that would have been a big chunk of money that we needed to make it through the year. I mean, I think it sold for 5,000 bucks. Just saying. Um, I, I, that might have been a lost opportunity. I'm sure another one will pop up again. I'm not too worried. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm constantly watching the state auctions. We have a very old house, so when certain pieces go on the market, we're, we're very, very interested. There we are. But I made the right decision and I did not buy the trolley. We really needed that money this last year, so, you know. There we are. Let's tie those together underneath the snap. Surely this is how they do it professionally. I don't know. I will learn and get better and better at things as I go, I'm sure. But for now, I'm just trying to hide some of the knots for the snap underneath the snap so that um, the other snap, which I can't hide the knots for, can lie a little more flush up against it. But yeah, don't you just want to own a trolley? I mean, just saying. And so this week there's been a plumber at the, the brewery around the corner from me. And um, I didn't realize it was a plumber. And you, you don't want a trolley? Really? Are you sure? Um, so there was a plumber at, at the brewery around the corner, but I didn't know it was a plumber. It looked like an ambulance. Um, and I was worried because I, I, I know the brewery. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder, is, it, is Aaron okay? Is Jenny okay? What's, what's going on here? And um, <laughs> and um, I get up to it, and it 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 um, <laughs> it was an ambulance that someone had clearly bought at like a state auction and turned into a plumbing truck, and they called themselves like emergency rescue plumbing or something, and it was it was great, it was amazing. Three car garage sized shop. Oh. No comment. This carriage house is technically above a two-car garage, and then I have a third over here in a boathouse. Um, it's a very, very old house, though, so the carriage house is actually um, has wood floor, so we don't park cars on that. We'll fill it with cement one day. One day. Yeah, we um, we knew we needed like garage, carriage house type space. We, I mean, like we have hoists, we have, we have all kinds of weird equipment. Um, yeah, yeah, that's just who we are and we know who we are at this. So our first place we lived in was in the North End and it was this detached condo setup. I don't know why we thought this was what we wanted, but it's what we thought we wanted. And um, we were like the rednecks of the neighborhood because we, we constantly had the garage door open with different projects going on. Um, and we had at one point a, a rock, a, a treadmill rock climbing wall in the garage. Um, and yeah, we did not fit in there. I don't know what we were thinking when we, when we bought and moved in there, but it was not us. Um, God, they wouldn't, they wouldn't pay $2,000 a year for recycling, but they'd pay $2,000 a year to make sure they mailed all of their note meeting notices to people instead of um, email. It was, it was like a retirement community without being a retirement community. It was, it was kind of awful. It was not right for us. Let's just say that. Um, But uh, yeah, so we, uh, we did not fit in there. But where was I going with that? Oh yeah, and that was only a two car type 
garage situation. Um, but, you know. We, it ended up, there was this like bonus room in the basement that turned into an, a decent shop. Um, and actually, yeah. Anyways, that was not the right place for us. We don't live there anymore. Now we have a really, really old house with lots of garage carriage space. So, good for us, I guess. Right? Right, right. There we are, pulling that in. Did that not, not stick? That not did not stick. Okay, tie it again. How did it not, not stick? I must have tied it poorly. Give me a pen so I can hold it in place where I want that not to happen. I learned this from Pearl, tying pearls. You can force a knot to appear in any location with a pin. It's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. There's probably a technique to it to get it better. What other exciting things are going on in life right now? I do only have about 30 to 45 more minutes on this stream as I teach tonight. And tonight is a demo night. I'm going to be teaching the kids about brush pens. So that should be super exciting. I have finally found brush pens that I like and I share that with the kids. And here we are. Get that knot tied under there so it hides nice, clean. One more knot should tie those two together because there's a little itty bitty bit of space between them. They're basically, oh, nope, not like that. Not like that. No, don't, don't, don't. Loosen, loosen, loosen. Loose. I sometimes wonder, why do I do this to myself? I don't know. The other day I was working with one of my students in my garden and my student looked at me and she said, you're an adult, right? I'm like, yeah, where's this going? Uh, uh-huh. And you can do anything you want with your time. Well, basically, I mean, ish. And you choose to do this? Yep. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, referring to the amount of digging and gardening and weeding and, and things I was doing. She has a point. Um, I do seem to grow my garden at every opportunity presented me, um, which is just more gardening time. Whatevs. What do you all do with your spare time that other people wouldn't? I do. Exactly. That's the whole point. I really enjoy my gardening, especially eating it. I mentioned I like food, right? <laughs> um, I really like food. And I'm making a video that will help educate people and I'm doing a little bit of an experiment documenting what I'm doing in that garden. It's, it hits all, and it's beautiful too. Like when you grow beautiful things, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Wait, that's the point. What's the point? Eating? <laughs> the point to life is eating. I will like it. <laughs> Welcome back. We've decided the point to life is eating. That that was that was the takeaway from our conversation, right? Um But yeah. 
Sleeping too. <laughs> yes, it is the point. Sleeping too. Sleeping's not bad, but like I sleep too much. I've got narcolepsy, so like I sleep too much. I don't need more sleep. Don't need it. Food. I'd like more food. Um, actually, I, I got a request from one of the parents of one of my students. They're like, so they own a barbecue business. And they were like, I'm catering a wedding and they want more vegetarian food. And you are literally the only vegetarian I know. Um, what do I, what, what should I offer here? <laughs> and I was like, ooh, ooh, I know this one. <laughs> I think I might have scared them just a little bit with the, the amount of information that I threw at them about being a vegetarian and how to cook. Yeah. Um. Yeah, if you want to rest, you'll rest in the cemetery, basically. Um, but um, I was like, ooh, I know all the answers to this whole vegetarian thing and how you make vegetarian food good. So I wrote like this, I, I've now written two long emails about how to cook vegetarian so it's actually good. Um, <laughs> but I'm feeling like, really cool with my food cooking that like someone is like okay so they really reached out to me because I'm the only vegetarian they know but like I must be kind of good if like maybe not maybe not I'm just the only vegetarian they know <laughs> but I, I gave him a lot of information in the email and he's like it's gonna take me all summer to digest this and you know that that's cool like coming from like someone who professionally cooks they're like, actually, this is a lot of theory and stuff, and I'm going to have to digest this. You know, pat on my shoulder. I have I have cooking theory. Maybe I'll write a cookbook one day. I, I already know what the title will be. It'll be Cooking Loud. <laughs> um, there was a point when we were living in an apartment building where we shared walls with people, and I felt bad for the people that shared walls with me when I cook. <laughs> Everything made ridiculous amounts of noise. Uh, like it was back when I ate meat, so I'd literally pound meat with like two by fours and PVC pipe. <laughs> you pound it and and you pound it on the counter and it gets softer and tender. It's nice, um, especially when you do like a yogurt marinade. And then uh, like I pulverize soups and that the stove in that place, like the, you you gotta pulverize with one of those boat motor things, and like ugh, I'm telling you. That's noisy. You want noisy. That's noisy. This is going to become a cooking channel, by the way. Just no. <laughs> Or maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> I might just be hungry. So the placement is also easier to get right by doing this by hand because I can slip in like little things here. It's true. I can just slip it in, slip the needle in, in between the snaps. Whoop, I think I just heard the tow truck come and get the car. That's nice. Cooking is a craft. You're right. 100% cooking is totally a craft. I just, I don't know, huh. I really am a vegetarian. I would be cooking all vegetarian. I don't think you guys want that. Most people seem to like meat. And I like meat too. I just don't like the way we kill the animals. And my stomach doesn't always like a lot of meat. So, you know, it never has, even grown up. There we are. It's a little twisted, but we'll get this smoothed out. Pull it through, I think. This is totally going to work, right? That's the theory, at least. Yeah, definitely Billy Joel stuck in my head. It's a good song to sing to. You know, I like Billy Joel for skiing um, as well as swimming. So, um, some of you probably don't even know who Billy Joel is. That is okay. I will not hold it against you. But he makes great music. Yeah, pork is a tricky one. Yeah, pork. Yeah, sausage. 
That's a no-go. That's that's 100% a no-go for me. But animal products just don't always agree with me, so why fight it, man? Just own it. Just like art mistakes. Yeah, and like... I don't know. I just don't like the way that we we farm. We we're doing it wrong, guys. <laughs> um, we really, really are. Like my body doesn't like the antibiotics that come in on the meat if I eat, you know, if I eat meat. So, like, um, I can do I can do eggs, but I mostly stick to egg whites. Um, I my I have. Uh, the food influenced hypercholesterolemia. So I, I get high cholesterol when I eat a lot of meat or things containing cholesterol. So that's another reason to go vegetarian. Um, my doctor was like, your cholesterol's high. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try vegetarianism. He's like, that doesn't ever work, but okay, we can try it. And I did it and it worked. Um, it's like, yeah, it does work. It's like, well, your, your father went on cholesterol meds. I was like, yeah, my dad wasn't gonna give up meat. Um, so I, I don't eat a lot of yolks. Um, milk is a no-go. Straight up milk has always been a no-go for me. Um, it has always made my stomach upset, but I was just forced to drink it. Um, so that's fun. Um, and then fish, I, I eat fish. Um, I'm trying to go towards the but not always, not perfectly, the more sustainable fish, like the smaller fish, and I really prefer my fish raw. <laughs> um, and um, cheese, cheese is an interesting one. I can, do I can do some cheeses, but not all cheeses. My favorite cheese, brie, I can only do a bite of. <laughs> it is my hands down favorite cheese, but I cannot eat a lot of it. It's just no good for me. Um, but yeah, straight milk is a no-go. But so, and that, you know, then it goes to like, it's it's not lactose intolerant because ice cream seems okay. And like whole milk seems okay, but any milk that like has had the fat removed from it, I can't digest. So I'm Gouda, I can, I can do bits of smoked Gouda, yeah. It's not one that I seek out. And there are certain, so American cheese also makes my stomach upset. You know, that fake stuff. <laughs> so that's a no-go. Um, you guys are going to learn all kinds of things about my eating habits. <laughs> um, American cheese, Velveeta, those are all no-goes, which is tough because a lot of the, at least around here, the, the Mexican restaurants and um, Mr. Max uses, yeah, that yellow, orange, fake cheese in their stuff. So if I order something, I have to specify no American and no Velveeta. Um, yes, I know. I know. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. But people cook with it, and it really sends me for a loop. Uh, Jack uh, seems to not be great for me, um, but cheddar, Colby, um, Munster, par Parmesan doesn't make me upset, though it's not technically vegetarian because it, it uses, like, I don't know, baby cow stomachs or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Lady Verona. Uh, yeah, it's not real cheese, but it does not set well on my, my stomach. I don't know what it is. So I just avoid the things that make my stomach unhappy. I figure that's good enough. And most among them, it's meat. And I just don't like, you know, if the animal had a good life and it's antibiotic-free, and it's in a circumstance where I know that it had a, you know, a decent life, was able to move around, have, have a life, and it wasn't given antibiotics. I will consider eating it in the right scenario. But I don't feel the need to do it in my own home or to spend that much for the meat. I eat a lot of beans. Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, we started talking about food. Um, cooking is a craft. And so uh, this person with a, a barbecue business, uh, 
contacted me uh, and asked me how to cook for vegetarians because he was like, you're literally the only vegetarian I know. And I was like, let me tell you, I know how to cook. Um, and so just, just talking about those things. Um, beans are wonderful. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Lady Ferona also likes beans. Um, so I, I sent them to, was it Rancho Gordo? And I was like, get, get the rare beans, get tasty beans. This is how you cook beans. Um, talked about fresh beans and fava beans and, um, do you burn water? Uh, I've done that too, but it's usually because I'm distracted with something else. Um, oh man, there's so many beans and mushrooms. And then, so the, the guy I was talking with, like he doesn't do tofu and he doesn't do mushrooms. So I'm like, you're going to have a tough time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, because beans are wonderful and they last a long time. I have just learned of canary beans actually that I'm super really enjoying. I made a great spring soup with it. Um, I got it at the Saigon market here. I hadn't seen canary beans before, so I thought I'd try them. And that mixed with um, fiddlehead ferns and asparagus in a soup was so good. So good. How, how many pounds do you have left now that we're mostly through these lockdown days? Do you still have hundreds of pounds? There we are. We're getting there, getting there. Oh, you just got more. So there's no data comparison as to how many pounds you bought during lockdown and how many you still have remaining. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm growing my fava beans out in my country garden. It's going quite well, actually. The, the plants are like three feet tall, which is way taller than anything I ever got here in the city. I think my soil is just too warm for them. You could probably grow fava beans in your garden over the winter. I bet they like that. Um, and their fava beans fresh are so good. They're no good dried. Fava beans are horrible dried, but they're so good fresh. Um, <laughs> I found a local bean producer actually through our CSA um, out of Maine. So that's exciting. I've been, they have soldier beans and cow beans. So that, that's been fun. And black turtle beans, which just look like black beans to me. I don't know. But my CSA started this week, so I'm super excited. Yeah, uh, there's no comparison in terms of fava beans for fresh versus dried at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm now a bean farmer. And now I'm doing that, that, um, what do you want to call it? Of the Three Sisters planting, where I'm doing um, Scarlet Runner beans um, with gem corn and a variety of squash. Really a variety of squash. Blue Hubbard, because that seems native around here. Um, some birdhouse gourds, because I want them. And some regular, regular old like sugar pumpkins. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, our, our CSA now has a hub, which is quite nice. And so if I like didn't add on and, and they have online management now, it used to be you just showed up and you got whatever you got, but they have this like online management of, of the produce. So you can be like, eh, I don't want asparagus because mine's growing really well, but I would like more lettuce because I don't have any yet. So you can kind of like pick and choose before you go, which is really great. I know, we're probably really, really boring Kelvin Dore here. <laughs> He's like, why are we talking about farm shares? <laughs> Savoy cabbage. I, you know, there's a recipe called pancit that might be really good. Um, P-A-N-C-I-T, pancit, um, that I think is made with Savoy cabbage. Um, yeah. 
that's that's pretty good. You make it with like a mung bean noodle. Um, most people make it with a chicken. You could totally do it a tofu, um, but it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good, and you can make a lot of it and save it. <laughs> that's how I cook. There we are. You're not bored. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> Baker. Oh, I like baking too, but it usually has too many calories for me to actually do a lot of. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I think when my garden gets going, I'll be able to do that. And I, yeah, it'll be close. <laughs> yeah, baking, baking is amazing, but yeah, no, I just gain weight so fast. There's no, it's not fair. No baking for me. I'm not doing pumpernickel anymore. No, nope, we're we're hardly doing bread in the house, actually. Um, it's just too many calories. I did make a cornbread um, this weekend because I, I saw some television show and it had cornbread in it. And I was like, I really want cornbread. So I made um, cornbread, northern style, of course, because I wanted it a little sweet. But I am trying so hard not to bake. So hard. Because I eat it. If you bake it, you eat it. And that's the problem. I cannot eat that much. <laughs> and uh, and we did, we got a new, a, a new stove and oven. It's a Viking. Um, but the knobs, it didn't come with knobs. So I need to just buy the knobs. Um, but I'm using other knobs on it. So I'm guessing at where the temperatures are just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I have a thermometer in there, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of guessing. <laughs> Again, another like state auction type thing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I like black eyed peas with um, spinach greens. Um, that's my favorite, cornbread. Um, I haven't had it with cornbread, though I did have my sog paneer with, with my cornbread last night. Um, yeah, see, corn, corn, black eyed peas, mustard greens, I mean, ugh, yeah. Like, that's dinner. It's dinner, right there. It's everything you need. It really is. <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, come on, not, you can do this. Why did it... And now it's acting funky. Of course it is. What are you doing? How did you do that? I really don't know. That should not be possible. Who knows? Just tie a knot. Keep it going. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. I have to eat dinner late tonight because I teach. Speaking of which, yeah, I've got about 15, 15 more minutes on the stream before I can, before I gotta go so I can grab an apple real quick and teach. It's fun. It's gonna be a demo night, so it, it, it's recorded. I gotta be really set up for that. Hmm, I don't think I'm gonna use that string because I'm hand stitching that I'm hungry is that what you, you're saying I could see that I guess not something I'd considered before but we did get another another snap in which is rather nice um, because like the sewing machine took way longer than it should have because the timing is so off. That didn't help. I ran it through the wax and everything and it just split when I put it through the needle. Let's try that again. Oh, it's being difficult because I'm hand sewing. 
Well, like, baby lock needs to be serviced. That's all there is to it. And I kept putting it off. And I knew it was probably going to, like, bite me in the butt if I didn't get her serviced ahead of time. But I didn't. What's in there? Go, go, go. Okay, we're in. Um, I knew it was going to bite me. But we'll see. They'll fix the timing. It'll probably be fine. As I tie knots and get snaps on things. But I will probably finish the snap sewing in front of the TV instead of making you guys watch me do it. That way I can do more exciting things. Like design my next bag or something. And I do think it's surprisingly going to be another bag. I really need new panniers for my bicycle. Um, I've kind of needed them for some time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's timing, it's timing. It just gets off, you know, that's all. It's gonna be fine. Oh, I didn't need to rethread that. <laughs> that's all right, now I'll find it better in my pin cushion. I'm gonna trim up those threads and I'm gonna super glue them. <laughs> um, that's my super duper trick lately to keep these things together. Super glue the knots. Because why not? Technology has given us advantages and we should use them. Yeah, the timing's off. Like, I'd started noticing it on little bits of sewing here and there, but of course in something that's so set and in one place as the, the snaps, um, the timing being off really begins to show itself. It's true. All right. Super glue, where have you gone? Super glue, super glue. I don't know that that's copyrighted, so I'm not gonna keep going with it. That tone. Um, I had super glue. Hang on. Here we are. Tell me this is my open super glue, not my closed one. It is closed, but I think I used the last of the other one to the super hiding place. <laughs> All right. Do, do, do. Here we are. So we're gonna super glue this on camera so you can see it. Yeah, right here, if I work it here. And we're gonna poke the super glue. And this will be the last thing I probably do on camera before going to get my stuff set up for my class. You don't need that ring. Okay. It's making me nervous. It always makes me nervous. It's the gel kind. So it like shouldn't spurt out at me, but I'm always nervous about this. I don't want to get it all over my fingers. There we go. I did it. There we are. And then adding super glue to the snaps on the knots so that um, so they stay. Because this is not going to be up against my skin, so I'm not worried about it being soft. And then the trick to setting super glue, water. Just a little water. Coolness. Now we're going to do this side. And we're just doing the knots, just the knots. Don't be, don't be nervous. Have you ever met anyone with anxiety? Okay, get it in the camera. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Got a little super glue here to really solidify those knots. There we go. And water to set the super glue. Cool. And we'll let that dry. Pull these apart. I'm going to super glue these. Oh, I'm not in camera again. Dang it. We're going to lift that camera up so that more is in view. There we are. 
water. Nice. And the knots again. Super glue, super glue. Here we are. Again, it's just to like really set this. It's probably excessive, and if my knots were any good, I probably wouldn't need to do it, but. <laughs> Water, well, it's a medical glue, um, and so the moisture from your skin is what used to, you know, really set it. Um, so water is what you want. Um, remember, my husband is a medical device engineer. So I know things. Also, he's a medical device engineer who recently cut his finger wide open with an angle grinder and negotiated with the doctor to not have stitches so that they wouldn't have to numb him um, because he didn't want that numbing sensation on his nerve, like the needle injection. He was like, he thought that would hurt more than if they just glued it shut and he didn't use his finger for a week. Yeah, that, that's a good way to set it. Like you usually just get the moisture out of the air. Um, but if you want to rush it, you just throw water on top of it. There we are. So that should hold up. Where'd my lid go? There it is. Yeah. I had to take him to the ER. It was great. It was great. Only our second ER visit in the middle of the pandemic. Our first was when we, working together, dropped 700 pounds of metal onto my hand. It didn't even break the skin. No, it did a little bit. It didn't I didn't break anything. I didn't break anything. The hand still works. Um, okay, so those are setting. And I now have three snaps. We started this with one. No apology necessary. You take your naps as you need. But I am getting ready to like kind of finish up here because I need to grab water, refill my water for my class that I teach the kids. Uh, what else? I don't know. I'm gonna put away thread and stuff. No apologies necessary, Anna. We've been through that. We simply have a medical condition. Yeah, I don't have to go anywhere. I just need to clean up and move things around. Yeah, it's definitely getting to me though. Like I schedule things with friends and then I'm ending up late and I'm not for someone who's like generally late because I'm not used to calculating that I need time to travel there. <laughs> Um, so that's been an adjustment. Yes, the shirt is amazing. It turned out great. We dyed this. This was the first thing I dyed on, on Twitch, you know, with the really controlled lines. Um, so I'm quite happy with it. And then I added my logo subtly. It's a subtle, subtle glitter. You're getting rain. Oh, that must be nice. We need more rain. I think we get your rain that's coming. I think we get your rain at the end of the week which will be good. We got some rain over the weekend, which was good too. We needed it badly. <laughs> Just not the chipmunks. Dude, the squirrels got in a battle in my yard this morning. I don't know what was going on. I recorded some of it. I, I'll edit it together and put it on Instagram. But there were like, I counted at one point eight squirrels in my yard. I did use baby lock today and she is going to get a checkup from the doctor. So I guess we'll find out if she's pregnant. Um, she, she, her timing is really off. So it is definitely time to get her to the doctor and get serviced. So like, I think there was a squirrel battle going on in my yard and we have a melanistic squirrel. It was living in our yard with mom and the babies for the longest time, but now it appears to be living like across the street. I'm not sure what's going on, but it was super exciting to see a melanistic squirrel in my yard. Um, just like that genetic adaptation is kind of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah.
Yeah, chipmunks are special. So adolescent squirrels and chipmunks are particularly vengeful on a garden, I feel. Um, I think my squirrels are moving out of their adolescent phase. So I put my uh, sunflowers in the ground and they haven't gotten eaten up. So it must be working. Um, yeah, I chipmunks, chipmunks are not my favorite. Um, all right, calendar. Have a good night. I'm picking up, packing up here as well um, because I need to, to get ready to teach my kids here in like 15 minutes. Um, as I pack up all of my seam rippers, have you guys seen my seam ripper collection? I mean, really, uh, I now have a collection of seam rippers. And I put the, the blades on, put the needles away. This box just broke this one here. So I'm thinking I'm going to take everything that's in here and put it in this bigger box. I think everything will fit. Right, like this. Doo -doo -doo. My seam rippers don't fit in here though, unfortunately. Just picking up so I can teach. Having extra things lying around. Putting everything away, putting everything away. We'll put my wax in here too. Yes, Jack the Ripper. Here is Jack the Ripper. This is Jack the Ripper. Turns on, lights up, so you can see things. Here we are, Jack the Ripper. And then um, I also have these two. So this is the old one I had that I couldn't find that but can now find. And then I have this one as well, which is really tiny and pointy. Um, so Jack the Ripper, and I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> um, and I have two of these neon ones just because I got tired of losing it. All right, Excalibur gets put on its magnet. Don't think I need that. Billy has charcoal on her face. Not surprising. He's get on with the rest. Okay. Do do do. Yeah, I'm thinking. Well, that's just a colored pencil. That doesn't have to live in there. Not anymore. Here we go. And the rest are pins and needles. Cool. All right. Well, it is time for me to get going because. Yes, that's accurate. Yes. Yeah, I know. Um, we noticed that the color challenge that we're having here today, um, it's just a different camera, like a different make and type of camera. But um, I assure you, it's just, yeah, it's, it makes me look sickly. Like, look at this. This is not, not normal. I don't know why my camera, this camera has just suddenly started to like not be cool. But um, it has. That's what it decided to do. Broken needles, as I told you guys, I break needles. All right, this is better. We'll put this away. That's where everything belongs anyways. And throw this away. Because it broke today. All right, it's great talking with y'all. Great hanging with y'all. Um, yeah, I look sickly, green. I know, I know. I don't know what's going on with this. I mean, I can adjust the focus, but I don't think that's gonna adjust the color. It's actually quite warm. The camera itself is warm. Oh, wow. That's new. None of these other cameras are warm. I think it's dying. I think it's dying. I think this camera is dying. Um, yep, I'm gonna have fun teaching. Uh, I love you too, Anna. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I'll see y'all next week, if not sooner, if I you know, have something to work on that's super easy. I've been gardening a lot though. Gardening. Maybe I'll garden live. I don't know. All right. See y'all. In love and science. That's my sign off, right? In love and science. Bye.